This Faith Thing, Episode 12. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is trusting in God with all your heart. Faith is knowing that all things are possible with God, that nothing is too difficult for God to do. This faith thing can be easy when we have God on our side. Faith is the word of God. Welcome back for another episode of This Faith Thing. Like I said in Monday's episode, we are going to be going deeper and deeper into the word of God. When you know the word of God, it makes your life so easy and fears that once upon a time dwelled in your heart, it disappears because you know you are a child of God and God dwells in your heart. When you look around you, you will see that there has been certain things that has happened in your life that seem to continuously occur. It happened once, then it happened again, then it happened again and again and again. Then you have no other choice but to wonder, why are all these things happening to me? Why does it seem like it's only me that these things are happening to? As I've grown in the Lord, I've learned that nothing happens for nothing, but instead something happens for something. There's a reason why all these things keep happening. And by now, with the pitch in my voice, The way I'm speaking, you should know that I'm referring to things that are negative, negative occurrences and negative events in your life. Strongholds are real and as such, we should take them very seriously and learn how to quickly attack them. You may be fighting a tough stronghold, one that is weighing you down in every manner of the word. You have been captured and made a prisoner of this spiritual war, and Satan loves it. These strongholds could be addictions, lying, lusting, fornication, adultery, drug addiction, stealing, abuse, the pain of failed relationships, and much more. These are all spiritual strongholds that are holding you back. They have a tight grip on your life and you don't know how to break free from them. Sometimes you may see that you are drawing away from these strongholds, but Satan uses his sneaky tactics to draw you back. Strongholds. Some of you are even dealing with personal and private strongholds that you are so embarrassed that you cannot even share with the world. The defeat of your mind is a stronghold. Pornography is a personal stronghold. Smoking, addiction to sex, harming yourself. All of these things are strongholds personal strongholds that sometimes you are so embarrassed to tell your neighbor, tell a family member so that you can receive your help. You keep wondering why and blaming everything and everyone around you for these strongholds. The world likes to point its finger at what they think is the problem, not knowing or understanding that these strongholds are spiritual battles. They are not caused by anyone or anything here on earth but is dealing with the spiritual realm. A stronghold is a battle that your spirit being is engaged in with the spiritual realm. Strongholds capture you in a way that your flesh body cannot understand. And because this war is not of the flesh, in order to get rid of it, you must operate in the spiritual. You cannot fight. We cannot fight this spiritual battle using weapons of the flesh. And you need to understand the differences here. There's a clash between two worlds here on earth. The godly world and the ungodly world. The satanic world. And the two are clashing against each other. And they always clash against each other. Let's turn to the book of Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This war that we are fighting here on earth is not a physical war. We are fighting a spiritual battle daily, friends. Daily. The moment that Satan was kicked out of heaven into earth, Earth has been in trouble. 
That's why Revelation 12, 12 says, Rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having a great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Satan knows that his ruling and his operations are for a short time. And so because of that, he works tenaciously to bring anyone and everyone down to his level. He puts these strongholds in our lives to hold us back from claiming the victory that was won on the cross for us. Ephesians 6.10 tells us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, that we put on the armor of God. That is the power of God. Society tells you that you can do everything on your own. You're brought up thinking and taught and trained that you can do everything that you want to do on your own. But the book of Ephesians tells us that we are to be enclosed in the power of God. We are to wrap ourselves in the power of God because you cannot fight this war by yourself. Look at it further. Verse 11 says that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand against the wicked schemes of the devil, the plans and devices of the devil. The devil is always planning on how to bring you down. He's always working against those who he knows are children of God. He has no reason to be working against those who are already on his side. He's not interested in them because they're already on his side. He's looking for you, you child of God. You that want to do the right thing, that's who the devil wants. So every single day, he's always planning Scheming against you, working how he's going to get you to his side. Ephesians 6, 12 tells us that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We are wrestling against powers, against principalities, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. You cannot fight this battle with your flesh, friends. Guns, knives, and bombs will not win this battle. You need the whole armor of God, the whole power of God. You need to make sure that you have this power. And it's only then that you will be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to just stand. Pay attention to your life, friends. Look around you and notice that all the wars, all the battles that you fight every day that's happening around you left and right, they are not physical. Stop using your mere eyes to look at the problems thinking that, oh, it just happened. It doesn't just happen. Things don't just happen. One family member is diagnosed with something today, another one tomorrow. That's not just happening. It's spiritual. One family member died yesterday, another one dies today. That's not just physical. It's a spiritual battle. Someone lost their job today, the next person tomorrow, the following person the next day. It's not physical. Generational diseases. This person had breast cancer. The next person had breast cancer. The next person had breast cancer. It's not physical, friends. God never intended for us to suffer here on earth. That's why Jesus Christ came and that's why he died on the cross for us. So that he can take all of those sicknesses, all of those pains. He nailed them to the cross for us. So there's no reason why you should be fighting any physical battle. There's no reason why you should be suffering here on earth. But the devil, when he was kicked out of heaven, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that the earth has fallen into trouble because he's here. And so because of that, he wants to work against you. He wants to pull you to his side. Every single day, he's working to pull you to his side. It's not godly, friends. It's satanic. It's very satanic and ungodly. Second Corinthians 10 Verses 3 through 6 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. It says it here in 2 Corinthians 10 that we are not fighting a war with flesh, in the flesh. We need to pull down these strongholds, cast down these imaginations to everything that is not obedient to Christ. Anytime something negative in your life is happening, it is not obedient to Christ. When your body doesn't work properly, it is not being obedient to Christ. You are to command it to be obedient to Christ. 
when your thought process, whatever you're thinking, you know for a fact that what you're thinking is wrong. It's not being obedient. You need to command your mind, your thinking to be obedient. You need to whack your body back into shape. If you need to use a hammer to whack it back into shape, to be obedient to Christ, then that's what you need to do. Anything that is not obedient to Christ needs to be broken down. It needs to be pulled down. It needs to be pulled down. As a child of God, you need to not fear the plans of the enemy because you carry the power of God. God has already given us the steps. He has already given us his armor that we need to use to conquer Satan and his demons and this spiritual warfare that we fight every day. The first one is that you first of all need to take up the armor of God and stand. Be sure and confident in God. You need to be sure that you are sure in your confidence in God. The second thing you need to do is you need to stand firm with the truth of God and the breastplate of righteousness. You need to know the truth and you need to stand your ground in the truth. You need to stand firmly in the truth. The third thing is that you need to put your feet in the position to fight this war. Let your feet be planted in the gospel of peace. You know, when you look at some military soldiers, you know that they actually have a way that they stand. And I would know very well because once upon a time I wanted to join the Air Force. That was my desire as a teenager was to join the Air Force. But man proposes, God disposes. So you know that there's a way that they stand. They stand firmly so that when their enemy is coming, they are ready to attack. Your feet can't just be planted anywhere. It has to be planted in the gospel of peace and the gospel of our Lord and Savior. The fourth thing is that you must have faith. When you have faith in God, the enemy knows that you have faith and he wants to quench that faith in you. He works every day to get your faith down to a level where he can begin to use you and, and manipulate your mind into thinking the way he wants you to think. Make sure you have faith that is unshakable, unbreakable. That's the type of faith that you need in order to fight this spiritual battle, friends. The fifth thing you need is that you have to wear your helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which are the words of God, which is the word of God. When you're fighting this battle, you must know the word of God. You must be able to say the word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says that for the word of God is quick and it's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing a thunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is discerner and of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's a powerful weapon, this word of God. The sixth thing you must do is that you must pray always, pray without ceasing. Remember, 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says that we are to pray without ceasing, but this time you need to pray in the spirit. You need to be in tune with the spirit of God. Let your spirit be in, be in tune with the spirit of God. Praying always, never ending prayers. All the time, pray all the time, friends. You cannot leave your home, your dwelling place without covering yourself in prayer. Once you step out, once your foe, your first step gets out of your house, believe it that the devil is looking. He wants you. He wants to capture you. You need to be in constant prayer all the time in the spirit. And number seven is that you need to make Jesus Christ your example. There's nothing here on earth that we as humans are experiencing that Jesus did not experience. Jesus knows what it means to be in battle with the enemy and he knows it firsthand. Jesus handled the attacks of Satan when he tempted him in the wilderness. You can read the story in Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Every time Satan tempted Jesus, Jesus will answer him the same way, saying, it is written. Jesus knew the word of the living God. He knew it. It dwelt in his heart. And he knew that the word of God was the most powerful weapon that he could use to get rid of Satan against the temptations of the devil. If Jesus used the word, then why would you think that you could use something else? Make Jesus Christ your example. Make Jesus Christ your example in fighting this spiritual warfare that we're in on a daily basis. It's good to activate those seven steps that I just gave you. But in order for them to work for you, you must have a relationship with God. It is not enough to rebuke in the name of Jesus with no relationship. Your rebuking won't work. Even Satan himself will know that it's not working. You have to make sure that you know that Satan knows the word of God. Satan is not stupid and he's not a fool. He's actually very smart and very crafty. 
and he knows the word of God. Make sure that you have a sin free life, that you are living your life for Jesus, that you're living your life for God. And, and it's only then that you'll be able to activate those seven steps and they will work. My prayer for you is that you will take this message and you will run with it and you will change your thinking to how you see battles upon your life every day and know that it's not physical, that it's spiritual. I hope that you have been blessed. May God keep you. May he bless you. May he envelope you with his power. May he envelope your entire household with his power. Thank you for listening and I'll speak with you on the next one. Thank you for tuning in to This Faith Thing with Adele Aduni. Please head on over to the website at thisfaiththing.com to find the show notes and everything mentioned inside of this podcast. I pray that you have been blessed. Go in peace and I will see you in the next episode. God bless you.